Welcome back to this week's pay-per-view. In today's paper, we're looking at can we clear up asymmetries from left to right using body weight bilateral movements. So just going to give you a quick little rundown in today's paper review. It's changes in torque angle profiles of the hamstrings and hamstrings to quadriceps ratio after two hamstring straightening exercise interventions in female hockey players. So this is coming at us from the UK. What we had basically was we had two exercises and a control group and these are split into three groups. We had Nordic hamstring exercise and we had an eccentric leg curl on a TRX strap and then we had a control group doing normal training. So we started off with 30 university uh, level female hockey players. So they had no current injuries and in the last year they had no history of hamstring or ACL uh, issues essentially. So they are currently training two hours twice a week. They were split into three groups. So we had the NHE group, the ELC group and the control group. So NHE is Nordic hamstring exercise group and then we had the eccentric leg curl group and then the control group. So this was a single blind randomized control study. So in the baseline and post intervention uh, assessments we had eccentric strength of hamstring was recorded and the concentric strength of quad. So in the baseline and post-intervention assessments, we had the eccentric strength of the hamstring and then the concentric strength of the quad. What was measured was the absolute peak torque for every 10 degrees range of motion. We said absolute peak torque and the angle this was at. Then we had the hamstring uh, eccentric plus quad concentric uh, peak torque and then for every 10 degrees range of motion this went through. And then finally, we just had the absolute peak torque for the hamstring uh, quad ratio so hamstring eccentric plus quad concentric the program consisted of six weeks uh, three times a week and then they increased the range of motion plus volume and i'll just flash the program did it up on the screen so they increased the intensity essentially by increasing the catch point at which the players dropped their hands out for the nordic hamstring and then they increased volume as the other factor so essentially what they were trying to see was at what angles was their peak torque and what was the relationship between hamstring and quadriceps strength essentially and in the relationship between these. So over to Fitz, dressed in his, uh, his presenter, commentator jacket. I don't think he's going to wear that in the scene though. Okay, so for the results section, what we see is firstly, no difference between the two groups at the start. So the group that has eccentric loading and the group that has concentric loading were identical starting off. What we then see is significant increases in peak torque, so the, the strength of the hamstring in the eccentric group and the concentric groups, but on the non-dominant leg. So both exercises, the Nordic hamstring curl and the kind of TRX style hamstring curl, both showed significant increases over the course of the period in strength, but only on the non-dominant leg. Okay, the next thing then is the angle of peak torque. So this is basically the length of the muscle, making the muscle longer and stronger or allowing the muscle to be stronger when it's elongated. What we see here kind of mirrors the what we saw in the first section. So we see in the non-dominant leg, angle of peak torque is increased with both the concentric and the eccentric exercises. Finally, there was a positive correlation that was shown to be significant between the APT asymmetry at baseline. So people who had large amounts of asymmetry in their angle of peak torque at baseline and the amount their peak torque increased over the course of the study. So this is kind of the thing of the low hanging fruit people who would have large amounts of asymmetry once they started doing these specific exercises that asymmetry cleared up more than people who had no uh, asymmetry at the start. So for the discussion, I think there's a few interesting points here. Uh, in terms of takeaways for athletes and gym goers who are watching this, I think there's some things we mightn't have discussed here before, but angle of peak torque is very, very important in terms of injury prevention and definitely working out the asymmetries from side to side. So making sure I don't have huge amounts of peak torque out near the end of my range of motion on one leg if I don't have it on the other. What we saw today was on the non-dominant leg, so on the weaker leg, doing really simple exercises like this allowed us to fix that asymmetry. Um, and it's definitely something you can start doing yourself. So probably the biggest thing we should probably take away from this, and it, it's it's very, very useful concept and it's not. And really in the 
strength conditioning field for field sports and all different kind of you know like non strength based sports the big thing at the moment is complexity is seen as the number one so if we go by social media if we're looking at instagram accounts and youtube if we're looking at what people are doing what people seem to gravitate towards the most we're looking at the most complex exercises seem to be the most popular and what these in inverted commas coaches seem to be pushing as the most productive for their athletes and their best to increase sports performance but what we had here is a very 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 well designed study people who Definitely understood what they were talking about. What they went and measured, you know, was very, very in-depth. Like, it was very cut and dry. So what they did was two incredibly basic exercises. So two of the most simple exercises. These are the kind of things we see people doing, you know, at six, women's only 60-plus classes, like the TRX leg curl. Very, very simple. Nordic hamstring curls. So simple. The most basic exercises. And we saw significant increases. So, like, statistically significant increases. So not like, you know, their perception of their hamstring strength or whatever. Like, it was very definitely increased in their non-dominant legs so they saw an improvement only after six weeks so one of the downfalls of this and i think we would have seen significant increases in their dominant leg if we had a little bit better of an increase in volume and intensity so if we had something like a ghd nordic hamstring curl but if with that we would have had it for example weighted or you know a different kind of resistance so making the eccentric a little bit harder i would speculate that we would have seen a bit more of an increase especially in the dominant leg so it would make sense and it kind of makes sense after six weeks that the dominant leg didn't really get that much better on body weight exercises like this. Yeah. But it's very, very useful takeaway that their non-dominant leg improved, which is how you should be looking at these exercises, I think. Like if you're trying to improve your non-dominant asymmetry, that you can do it as something as basic as fucking TRX curls with a yeah, strap, yeah, yeah. you know. Complexity doesn't always breed more success. And I think the thing is that Everyone listening to this has some weak area or has some weak part of their game um, or they might have an injured area. And we always think like, oh, I don't want to be taking up training capital or recovery capital with having to do 20 minutes of single leg assisted squats. Or in this case, nor the hamstring curls at the end or start of my session because then I'm missing out on my kind of big gain or exercises, my deadlifts, my power cleans, whatever that might be. These are things that you do on your own at home at the office, wherever you want. The sessions are never long. They're never going to really, really like break you down in a way whereby it will impact on your ability to recover from normal training. And it takes no time to learn how to do a Nordic hamstring curl. You can spend your life perfecting it, but it takes zero minutes to figure out how to do it. Probably the big thing as well from this is that, you know, we've discussed that having an asymmetry doesn't mean you're going to get injured or you're going to have an injury in either limb. But what it definitely isn't going to mean is if you get a, a less of an asymmetry isn't doesn't mean you're going to get injured so there's no reason not to do this so they're very low impact yeah. like fit said it was very interesting that it was useful to see unweighted body weight exercises like this that we saw that they did bring up that asymmetrical balance or lack of balance essentially so it's very useful that without weight that we saw that this had the effect so it should be very useful for you especially if you're training at home if your gyms are going into lockdown and you're shutting down yeah. your gyms and you're like what's the most productive thing i can do so if you're a sprinter if you're part of there and you're only focused on your back squat there is never a scenario where having more of an equal balance between your limbs will be a worse scenario. So especially if you're sprinting, but even for in terms of like injury prevention for our back squatters, yeah. powerlifters, weightlifters, something as simple as this, very low impact in terms of like stimulus to fatigue ratio. It's very, very, very favorable for the outcome you're looking for. So while it's not going to build you a lot of muscle in your hamstrings or, you know, vastly improve your squat, it will bring up your, your imbalances as, as such. A big term at the moment, imbalances as well, and again, probably overused. But in this scenario, for what we're looking at, if your goal is, I need to make sure that there's not a huge discrepancy between my legs, what's the simplest and the laziest way I can go about doing this? This is the way it is. And that's how you should approach all your training. Yeah, like efficiency is key for that. Yeah. You might call it being lazy or you yeah. might call it being efficient. The last thing I want to say on this is like, people get really entrenched in like a camp. So they get entrenched in like the stability work camp where they only do their work on a bolsa ball or they get entrenched in a cable training camp or a free weights training camp. Like eccentric or concentric loading worked in this case. Yeah, It didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter what the, the exercise was. It just worked. It was a simple body weight exercise. It didn't matter the tempo they were doing it at. We talked last week about overthinking your training. Was it on the podcast? Uh, about overthinking no, and over... Major. Facebook lecture for the members, sorry, kind of paralysis through analysis to the point whereby you're impacting your training because you're thinking about it too much. And this is the classic case whereby thinking about it too much wouldn't have made any difference. We all think like 
eccentric versus concentric, they have all these better merits for different things. If you're trying a simple thing like making a weak leg stronger, you don't need to think about it that much. Yeah, if you boil it down, the base facts is that being proactive about something, so being proactive, I want to make my hamstring better or stronger or whatever, you'll almost certainly get some of the way there in the initial few weeks if you make any kind of effort, and that's much better than, you know, worrying about what you do. Doing something is better than doing nothing about it. Thanks for everyone watching these. I know certain niche people do enjoy the pay-per-view, so we do appreciate that. For people wondering, so we are we are looking for some good psychological evaluation ones where they use kind of verbal encouragement because people are wondering about that, and is this, you know, I assume it's coaches looking for this. Then we're also looking for people about vertical jump performance and we've got a good few people asked for that so we're, yeah. we're looking for kind of a meaty one for that so and there's loads of vertical jump ones but we'll find a good one that we think is you know somewhat interesting or we might go for a meta-analysis one of those when we find it yeah i'd say there are probably the two topics coming up next anyway will be psychological encouragement during testing and some sort of jump yeah interventionalist hopefully yeah thanks for watching guys